It's gateway to Geet's time, baby! Hey, how you doing? It's me, your friend, Boingo. Hi. Uh, not a ton of thematic stuff happened last week. Like, not a, not a two... Not a ton of new thematic material happening this week. A lot just more just kind of like focusing in on the elements that we have already been like exploring and seeing and just kind of like stewing in that for a moment. This is very much like status quo episode of, all right, we've established the, the new status quo of how things are going to be going. How does everybody react to it? Because we see Ace and Buffa with their current disillusionment with the establishment of the DVP and how life is set up for them and all the, the, the game, the player, all this kind of stuff. And basically we see their actions and reactions on fighting against it we see ace being very calm and planning kind of moving his pieces on the board trying to see the whole picture like he's going to buff and going like okay cool we're at a truce you're not gonna kill me i'm not gonna kill you till we can figure this thing out without verbally saying that he's going up to neon and sarah and going like hey look this shit's fucked we're competing against each other, but, like, I'm not really, I'm not playing your game. We are doing different things, and I'm not going to kind of attack you, so don't come at me. We're figuring, I'm, like, I'm figuring things out, and he, like, kind of does the same thing to KY, and it's just, it's a lot of, like, hey, I have a plan. I, it's him saying, like, I have a plan without him being able to say, I have a plan, you know what I mean? Uh, meanwhile, Buffa is just pure burn it down. Like, he, like, he's pissed off that he can't just kill everybody. Because it's like, that'd be so much easier. And it's just get them out of my hair. I just want this whole thing to be done with. I, I just, I, he just wants to sit in it and stew and just be done with it, you know? But, like, the game is just like, nope, you can't kill people. You can't win that way. And he's like, god damn it, fuck. So he's just, he's taking his time with it, you know, that kind of thing. And he, again, it's very obvious that, like, Buffa is not pure mindless, like, fuck a common Rider. It's very much, fuck people who are attempting to do this, right? Like, Ace comes in and he's like, hey, what's up? I got food for you. And Buffa's like, all right, fine. Because, like, he's not actively trying to be a common Rider. It's like, the minute he's, like... You get what I'm saying? It's it's very much of, like, reacting to the actions that they are taking. Like, if, if Ben and John just fought Buffa just without transforming in the Kamen Riders, he'd probably, like, smack them once or twice and just go, like, get the fuck out of here, what are you doing? And keep an eye on Aeon. He wouldn't have hurt anybody, but the fact that they actively participated in being a Kamen Rider and transformed on him, that's what made him, like, attack them. You know what I'm saying? That's the kind of idea I'm having with Buffa. It's like, it's very much a, he will only go to that level if you start at that level. Ace isn't at that level, so he's like, all right, cool, I'll, I'll stop and I'll eat. But like, that's kind of just like their reactions to the establishment of the DVP, you know? It's trying to figure out a plan and s circumvent the whole thing. Or just, alright, cool, you're doing something, I'm gonna destroy it, you know? And that's two reactions to uh, 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 unjust systems that we have. Of just like, alright, let's just burn it all down. Or just like, let's figure out a way to circumvent it. Meanwhile, there are people in, who will like see these systems, recognize the evil they, do, they cause, and try basically go like, yeah, but like, we can... <laughs> I need to solve something, right? Like, Kawa, of course, he's continuously wanting to bring people back, but now he has the extra layer of trying to protect Sarah, all this kind of stuff. Meanwhile, Sarah, trying to protect Kawa, and they're trying to use the DDP to uh, accomplish their goals, right? And Neon, while we can understand from the outside perspective, is a very self-destructive kind of goal, It there is a misguided, like good there she's not wanting anybody to feel heartache or loneliness or that kind of thing she values her audience and in in 
in a very very sad self uh, a very sad kind of suicidal way it's very much like uh, like they'd be they would be happier if i never existed kind of vibe which is bad but like they're they're still ultimately using the system for what they see as their own goals but ultimately it is just perpetuating it again it's the system in itself is the harm and no matter what good you could create from it does that justify the harm that could happen like yes kwa's goal is to bring everybody back and that's good but if it leaves the dgp alive that means more and more people can die is it justified for him to try and bring these people back if it means more people die that's the conflict and i think that's really interesting we're Welcome to Common Rider Geats, uh, aka the Trolley Problem, Common Rider Edition. Uh, and meanwhile, some people just want to like sit in the trolley and make it go faster, uh, and just take advantage of the whole situation and the chaos. Ned Sparrow being one of them, just trying to eliminate competition and all that kind of stuff. He does tricky, tricky, tricky things, and uh, basically says like, "Hey, Sarah, Neon." Look, if we team up, you can get all these things. You, get, you can get all these points and win. It's like, all right, cool. Meet me here and we'll go get a lot of things. And Nedge goes, Nedge then calls Buff and goes like, hey, uh, I'm, th I'm sending these people here. I'm sending them here. Uh, fight them. And Buffa sees through that. And so Buffa goes to fight fucking Nedge, right? And like, just fucking wrecks him. <laughs> yeah, of course he does. Of course Ned Sparrow gets his shit kicked in, because he's not ace. He thinks he's smart, but he is ultimately succumbed by the fact that he is but a small part of a bigger whole, and he is not actively intellectually curious enough to ask these questions that Kawa, Ace, Buffa, Neon, and even Sarah now are asking about, like, why is the system operating the way it is? He doesn't... He's not intellectually curious enough to, like ask these questions he's just selfish and greedy and just wants what he can get out of it and ultimately buffa seeing through that is, is like really indicative of like where he is as a character because like yes he is destruction he just wants to beat and bash common riders right but like he's doing it for what's seemingly a good end he wants the dgp to stop he wants to eliminate the harm that common riders cause and ultimately nedge is a very prime example of that taking advantage of other riders and putting them in dangerous situations that is exactly what buffa is against and buffa ultimately kind of shows that he i wouldn't say he's in the right he is very much like an anti-hero but it, it and when people say like oh he's not an anti-hero because he kills people like yeah no that that, that Buddy, anti-hero is a non-heroic person who is struggling with their own goals and will uh, try to achieve them through non-heroic means. That is a classical anti-hero. And if you want to just go with the contemporary anti-hero, Buffa's the Punisher. He's Frank fucking Castle. Like, yeah, th yeah, no. And Frank Castle kills people. So, yeah. Meanwhile, the Jamatos are also still around, and they're trying to take advantage of this whole situation by just, like, trying to stay alive, trying to get, like, their existence justified and all this kind of stuff. Because, ultimately, yeah, that's, like, the Jamato experience of being thrown away. Because DGP's falling apart, all this kind of stuff fall apart. And everybody's forgotten the Jamatos, they're just thrown away, and they're tired of it, and they're really trying to take back in, in, in like, take control of their existence, you know? And out of all of this, there are people above the system who are ultimately benefiting. Like, Gina is fundamentally disappointed that the DGB might disappear, but he is willing to part with it due to the to do his own personal growth that he has come through with Ace. Meanwhile, Baroba and Kekera are just lounging in Kawa's fucking apartment, fucking fucking raiding their fridge, being a couple of dickholes, especially Kekera, because he's lying to both siblings about like his true goals and intentions, and 
ultimately just leading them to what's going to be a very tragic end. And he's just going like, yeah, no, I'll probably make K uh, Kawa a better hero and all this kind of stuff. Like, does he even care about the true meanings of heroics or only the aesthetics of heroism at this point? That's the thing we got to uh, ask about this. So Murray shows concerns for the player and all this kind of stuff. And the GM just goes like, yeah, no, uh, doesn't fucking matter. We're going to fuck off. This is just, this, yeah, we're just fucking with them. We're just going to fuck off. It doesn't matter. We're, we're fucking gods. Who cares? And the, in the return of the producer and Punk Jack basically are there to, like, clean up the mess. That's honestly why I think this round happened of them cleaning up all the cores. Uh, it was just them going, like, ah, shit. There's a lot of cores just lying about. That's a lot of fucking evidence. Let's just get the players to clean it up. I mean, let's make a game out of it. Let's get the players to clean it up. And, you know? It's that kind of, like, flippant attitude. That I think, again, it's, we've been saying it's going to be the downfall of the DGP. They they just don't care about how this affects anyone, whether it affects their own uh, employees, uh, the players, the world around them. It's it's it, it, it it's the big giant company abusing its employees. It's the big giant company spewing toxic fumes into the air. It's that kind of thing, you know? Just no, absolutely... No responsibility for their own actions, and, and and not even reflecting on any of the 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 wrong and negative consequences that the players have been pointing out this entire time. It's it's just really fascinating. It's just, it, it's just really reflective of the real world, essentially. Uh, overall, this was a great episode. A good mix of drama and some funny moments from Kawa, like. It was cute, funny, and it wasn't over the top, which is when I roll my eyes a lot. It's like, yes, yes, it's a different form of comedy. It's a different uh, flavor of comedy, and that's fine uh, with a lot of Japanese comedy. But I, I do tend to roll my eyes a little bit. It's like, all right, cool, I get it. You know, that kind of stuff. This wasn't that bad. This was th this towed the line really well. Um, but it's nice to see uh, that even though he's gotten a little bit darker, that he is getting a little bit more of an edge. Uh, he's still that same lighthearted guy. He's still a good guy at heart, you know? Uh, loved the action. Loved, uh, I really loved the camera work at the beginning of the Buffa and Nudge Sparrows fight. Where it's like, zooms in, splits, lets them both hinge in, and then fuses back into one full image. It, the resolution, the quality of the image was not the greatest, but the cinematography was interesting i liked it i like this i like the attention the center uh the cinematography this season has really been doing but overall yes really good episode and hey you would know it'd be a really cool thing to do if you like comment and subscribe to this video uh it really helps me out do a uh, do a lot of things uh if you want you could also follow me on a variety of social media platforms twitter tiktok and instagram at boingo underscore writer you can also follow me on tumblr link is in the description you can also also follow me on twitch i stream monday thursdays and fridays and i hope to see you around uh do, do, do anything else i can think of nope i called all the actions you know what time it is now it's time for comments uh, we got a couple quick ones. Let's do a little rapid fire lightning round. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna fucking get the lightning gun from Quake. You know, uh, first up from Fish Pop. Did Glare 2 flat out died? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, probably save for later in like a digi digital, like weird future space. Because hey, you can always come back and be like there for the big final, final stuff. Uh, he may have also just been sent back to the future, you know? He's from the future. He, he, they may, he just may have been like, he may just be sitting in his future, lazy boy, just going like, shit, fuck, with like a packet of peas on his eyes, like, god damn it, you know? Uh, next up from Slime Beast. Interestingly, I think this is the first time anyone's ever shot the drones the glare suit uses for defenses. Uh, well, here's the thing. Not many people have, like, the skills to do it. And in fact, on that note, Geats is, like, the only one with a ranged weapon, right? Because KY has the double daggers, uh, um, Neon has the axe axe, Buffa has the chainsaw sword, and, like, and Ned Sparrow was a boxer, they, that's all, like, melee. 
Geats is the only one with a ranged weapon. Holy shit. Yeah, he's the only one who could have shot them down. Uh, next down from Eitaru. Uh, can episode 35 just be 20 minutes of Daichi being shoved in the locker over and over? Daichi is Night Sparrow. I'm just bad with names. Night Sparrow stuck in my head more. Uh, well, getting backstabbed by Buffa uh, and made to look like a fucking idiot might might suffice i don't know it's not exactly a locker but boy did he have egg on his face and made to look like a dumbass appropriately so and that's it for the lightning round all right whatever you know what's up next up from Toei nui uh, Toa nui i know it was kind of obvious ko would come back but i am a man of my word so somebody pick up pick up that phone because i fucking called it Gotta love, gotta love, uh, Team Four Star, uh, uh, cooler. Uh, that being said, I did not expect his return to be equivalent of a deal with the devil. And it does point, uh, paint K uh, Kekera in a slightly more sinister light, considering he threw Sarah under the bus to get Kawa back. And the phrasing my subs use kind of reminded me of Wally West's reverse flash and the whole tragedy makes heroes better angle. Also, with me calling it a deal with the devil, Baroba just hanging out with Kekera in Kawa's house just kind of reminded me of silly scenes in comics where Darkseid or Thanos would just show up lounging on some poor unfortunate soul's couch. On another note, I just realized I write a lot, it's kind of sad to see Naewon wasting, uh, wanting, wanting the world to forget her because she believes she shouldn't exist. On the Buffa side of things, I'm surprised how willing he and Ace are just to go along with Desire Royale instead of just going to the source since they technically still have access to both the admin drivers, but I guess there would be less story if they said how about no. The pure fact that Kekera and Baroba are just like hanging out, just being buddy-buddy, it just says n nothing good uh, uh, about Kekera. It just says a lot about his character, you know? That he is... That, that he is unwilling to actually recognize what... Uh, what heroism would be in this situation and work with someone who actively actively wants to commit wrong in in, a, in an environment that the person he the person he believes to be a heroic figure would be against you know you don't say you don't it, it'd be like saying superman's my favorite person and then you just don't act like it right like, that's the kind of thing. He is saying, oh, okay, well, heroism. I really... You're, you're a hero. Be a hero. And then he goes and fucking acts like a piece of shit. Like, it's lying. It, it's... It, it's... It's... It's not even like, oh, for the greater good. It's purely for his own it wants his own like oh i just want i just want kawa back you know not because like oh heroism and it's the right thing to do it's like no because i want i want my guy back uh and it's selfish you know really just shows like his heroism is very surface level and that's also probably why he is lying so much throughout this whole thing but for between sarah and kawa of just like uh, he wants the he wants the layers of tragedy for the hero. Kekera is the kind of guy who would be absolutely loving the current Spider-Man run. Uh, <laughs> this May seventeenth, uh, uh, two thousand three, for people in the future. Um, yeah, yeah, Kekera, Kekera, Kekera is very much of that level now. We we used to we used to like Frogman, not anymore, Frogman. I'm sorry. Uh, and here's the thing about Ace and Buffa. Ace definitely has a plan up his sleeve, right? He's Ace. He has a, he has an idea. He has a goal in mind. He's working at it. There's no doubt about that, right? And I think Buffa is ultimately just kind of letting, letting his anger get the better of him. Because I think in his mind, this whole thing happening is just retaliation. It's just like the last death throws. In my mind, Buffa is kind of sitting here going like, I have already won. This is just a DGP lashing out and thrashing, and I will destroy all the all the common riders and just slowly suffocate them, right? Like he doesn't need to go to the ultimate source to beat it, because ultimately in Buffa's mind, he has a pillow over the mouth already. Like, sure, in like sure that makes sense, but that's not how it's ultimately working. 
and uh, and it's just kind of like it's a short sightedness on Buffa's part, and Ace is playing a very very long game, so he's he's playing along for now in order to just like keep the game up. In my opinion, that's just how I'm kind of seeing these two guys. Like, yeah, they could just go to the ultimate thing, but like, I don't think they're thinking like that. You know what I mean? Next up from Esconde. I uh, really love this episode and the reviews you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Uh, we'd speculate before that Kekera might not be all that good of a guy, and oh boy, did his episode deliver on that front. Reveal of his motivation explains his decisions he made during the last round of the JGP, giving Kawa information that would rile him up, not saving him as he fell, because he that wouldn't contribute to his entertainment. Kekera often talked about the ideals of common writer slash hero, but is willing to make Sarah suffer in order to develop Kawa into his ideal hero without any care uh, for what danger they're subjected to so long as they get his as long as he gets his laughs. I love that Sarah's henshin pose is a combination of Kawas and Neons. Makes me wish she could add uh, a snap to it in the future to also include Ace. It also sounds very fitting for Ace to say he's grown attached to his friends just because they bonded over Soba once. Even though he's pissed off, I like that Kawa still took a moment to thank Ace for saving Sarah. You already covered it, and I like how the lack of information between our main characters explains the divide in their goals and why they're acting the way they do. Most of them don't have the whole story, save for Broem, Michinaga, and Daichi. Finally, this feels like the start uh, of the turn foreshadowed in Chaos character song from way back that I've been waiting for, and I'm looking forward to the conflict between him and Ace, hoping the writers do it justice. I also can't help but think of a few more callbacks when it uh, when it comes to what's happening. One, Ace has thought that uh, talk, tough talk that he gave during the Kick the Can game to Kewa. Would you care about the rest of the world if you could save uh, if you and your family would be happy? Two, during the Disaster game when Ace told Kewa he needed to give him evidence to prove he wasn't the traitor. Except this time, it's Ace that's the subject of both of these lessons. KK Rod definitely seems like kind of the, the torture porn idea of heroism, right? Heroes gotta suffer. But now it's also just a level of, like, superficiality. It's like, he doesn't give a shit, like, of true heroism. It's just like, they gotta, like, it's not even like, oh, heroes gotta suffer to be better. It's just like, oh, heroes suffer. That's what they do. Fuck them, right? That's, what that that's, it, you know, KK Rod really, KK Rod really just shat the bed as a character like in a good way like just made you go like oh man look at this piece of shit this episode uh but yeah no the it was real cute to sarah i really like the pose it's good uh one thing though when did she ever see neon's henshin like did she ever see her henshin before that moment how was she able to incorporate that you know it, but it's nice to see that two of the biggest influences on our life are just like are, are there in our heart you know uh, but yeah, this can definitely lead to punish Kawa, though I like how it's not just pure, like, oh, Kawa's now in, like, black eyeliner, wearing black, he's a badass. It's like, no, he's suffering, but he's still gonna be Kawa about it, he's still, like, trying to protect his sister, he's being a goof, but he is going, like, yeah, no, the, if, the, if, if, if this world hurts Sarah, I'm hurting the world. He's definitely saying that, and it's definitely, like, the moment she gets, like, any kind of, like, genuinely injured, he is going to fucking turn into the Hulk. You know, that kind of vibe. Uh, um, and, uh, yeah. And it's just a lot of shit just happening, and it's hard to fix, you know? Uh, and finally, from, uh, Sakura Tora. Love your analysis and reviews. Heart emoji. Guys, what do you think you're doing? Why are you, why are you doing these nice things? Uh, yes, Nay One is a bit beyond depression. It's a flag. Uh, it's a flag of when a person gets uh, their affairs in order to try and make sure people will be okay when they are gone. If it was a friend, I would keep a careful eye on them. We call Kekera shady, uh, but you called it specifically about him wanting to make a hero stronger by getting rid of the people around him. Amazing. He's like reverse Flash. 
Uh, it is interesting how dynamic, uh, how dramatic irony is used heavily in these past episodes. We know much more than most of the characters, and the characters reacting to a lack of information. It seems that as if laying pretty thick uh, uh, on Kewa, and I wonder if his answers to the trolley question will be e uh, will be even if Ace's mom is innocent, she still needs to be sacrificed to save the majority. Knowing what we know as the audience, having the DTP stick around is such a bad idea. Even if Mitsume wasn't innocent, we know she is, but dramatic irony for Kewa and Ace don't. Kewa is banking on him winning the Desire Royale, meaning his sister is not there anymore, allowing the DGP to exist and maybe grant his wish. DGP deaths, uh, not the Desire Royale deaths, have his memory reset, and that the next person who wins the DGP is in another Dapan with no Ace around. Their time period has been very fortunate. Ace has been winning. He kept... Uh, writer and civilian lives lost down in the happiness exchange pool relatively low. It's uh, hoping a lot of things will line up perfectly while making deals with a corrupt organization who only sees you as pawns for entertainment. What could go wrong? A better choice to end it, free her and hope Mitsume is willing to repent and pay for her sins. KOL's route is a little bit dark for a hero, forcing someone to stay in prison until they pay for their mistakes. I don't know if he knows she's trapped. But on some subconscious level, he must. Else, why keep her the DGP going and force her to pay for her sins? Yeah, Neon's really going through it. I'm kind. I just been kind of skirting around the just directly labor, labeling it all. It's like that she is having suicidal thoughts and depression. Cause like I don't want to lessen the actual things people have gone through in real life with this weird fantastic fantasy version. I just don't want to be disrespectful, but it is direct parallels. They are making those illusions and everything. And I have seen many people complain about seasons of Kamen Rider with like miscommunication of like saying the wrong thing and people misunderstanding and everything. And this season it's very much, please just share information. No, everybody has to be tricky little tricksters in in figuring things out. And it's just like, God damn it, please. Please, Ace, share your information. Share your plan. k would probably be on board. Uh, you know? It, it, everybody will probably be on board if you just explained your plan, Ace. No, I have to be sneaky. Um, uh, and I do like how a lot of the people are just recognizing... That, yeah, the DGP is the bad guy. But, like, the way they kind of, like, try and beat it is reflective of, like, who they are. Buffa is very blunt. He's just wants... He just destruction because he's angry. He's trauma response. All that kind of stuff. k wants to eliminate the harm that's been caused to people. But, ultimately, he has an idealized path that may be... That may not come to fruition. With, like, nuances he hasn't thought about. And Ace wants to cut out the power. He has a big, big calculated plan. But it's like, because it's cold, it's because it's calculated, it's callous. He's not recognizing the human cost. He's not recognizing that, like, th how this could hurt other people. And and Neon is a re reasonable reaction. It, like, this is too big. I can't do anything to stop it. She's just trying to escape. Uh, all that kind of stuff. And ultimately, with the way they're kind of, like, treating Mitsume, it could be just reflective of, like, contemporary understandings of justice. It's like... Ace wants to save her. K.O.L. wants... Uh, K.O.L. thinks she needs to, like, right the wrongs. It's a it's a possible reflective idea of restorative justice versus punitive justice, i.e. the idea that uh, people can be, uh, res like, resuscitated and be made well-meaning members of society, be taught their lessons, all that kind of stuff, versus, no, you did wrong, you must be punished, you know? Different ideas of the justice system, which are contemporary understandings, which are being debated in real life amongst uh, citizens in America, and I'm pretty sure probably happening in Japan too, especially with the way that their criminal justice system is a little bit, I wouldn't say fucked in the head, but it certainly, certainly is weird and not reflective, and, and, and is not like the American criminal justice system, it's 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 a rabbit hole but with that being said that is it for all the comments and that is it for this video i hope you enjoyed it again like comment subscribe do all the things uh check out my podcasts on uh modular media link is in the description uh i do a couple podcasts with a couple other buddies uh the vacuuminator 
uh, Buster Core, and a good good friend, Snowcone83. We do a variety of podcasts, including uh, a uh, weekly comic book podcast that I'm the host of with Thack. Uh, we talk about comic books that happened this week, comic book news, the toys that come out of that, movies and shows that come out of the MCU and the DCU, all that kind of stuff. There's also components where we just hang out, chat for a bit, Analytical Fanboys, a monthly media club, and we also have Twit. I'm not on that show, so if you want to hear some more thoughts about Tokusatsu this week, go check out Twit on Modular Media uh, with Vac and Buster. They talk about news, they talk about upcoming announcements, uh, toy releases, all good juicy, juicy stuff, and they talk about a lot more uh, Tokusatsu than I do, because I just typically do... Gateway to Geats and a short uh, King Ogier video. They talk about King, uh, they talk about Sentai. They talk about Common Rider. They talk about mo- movies that are coming out. They talk about indie stuff. A lot, a lot of good, good stuff. And that's an alarm uh, telling me that it's time because I have a poor sense of time. And on that note, please remain Geatsing. Till next time.